two years ago I had an exhibition at the Barbican Centre and I called it Reflections because reflections of water, reflections of thought, reflections in windows, I find really appealing and um, it helps me to sort of move on and uh, try and to make it a little bit more abstract. So I have done a lot with reflections of water and this one here is a reflection of a boat and I love the way that um, sometimes you don't see the sky but you do get the, the eyes led to the boat and also you know how you can get the reflections in the water and um, what here what I've tried to do is highlight just some of the light areas first and that's what I do I wax the areas that I want to keep light and then I put a pale yellow right across here and when that was dry I actually waxed the areas I wanted to keep yellow and gradually I build the light going from light to dark and once all this is under wax then I did a wash of colour right across because of course if the blue went over the yellow which in fact it did here it becomes green and here I've just concentrated on the greys and the blues and in here in the water the more purpley blues as well. I was introduced to batik when I was studying to teach. It was after I'd done history at university. And something appealed to me about the technique. First of all, it slowed me down. So I was using wax and I was having to work back to front in a way. I then started developing it in a more painterly way. And really, I'm much more realistic, more figurative than most batik artists. And in comparison with Indonesian um, technique, I'm actually using different dyes. I'm using Procyon cold water reactive dyes. Um, but I am actually doing it more painterly. In Indonesia, they do use chantings and they do use little tools and chaps. I use a chanting a lot and I also use a brush. And you'll find that in some parts of the world, they use a brush like in Japan. So I'm actually using different Eastern techniques and I'm producing something more Western. This picture is a picture, a batik painting, of the, um, a house of a friend of mine in Nova Scotia. And why I like it is because I've waxed the areas I want to keep white. Um, I also have waxed a lot of it and then taken the wax out because I've got a red roof. And the red roof is difficult. You can see areas where it's actually run into the background. But um, I'm going to camouflage that with more dyes. I also have done, um, I had the sky a little bit lighter, so that's why I took all the wax out and I'm starting again. You probably think it's a little bit sort of time consuming, but the fact is I can actually get very fine details. And sometimes the dyes sort of creep into areas that I don't really intend to, but that helps me to sort of be a little bit freer, um, even though it looks very tight. And I try and sort of get, um, more sort of fluidity. The wonderful thing about this process is when you have a light behind it, it sort of glows and you can see by holding it up to the light how the picture comes to life. When I put it down like this, it becomes flatter. Now what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to wax the sky. I'm going to leave little gaps and I'm going to let the dye go into those little gaps to form the silhouette of the, the branches. Quite often people say, why do you do batik? Isn't it very time consuming? Why don't you paint? Surely it would be much easier for you to paint. And I think if I painted, I probably would be too exact. And sometimes the wax pushes me into directions that I never would go. something really appealing about um, working with wax. It slows you down, it's relaxing, it's probably one of the times in the, of the day that you can actually concentrate on something, put, take your mind off other things for the busy day. Um, I sort of feel that I've got wax probably in my veins, but it's something, the process of it, doing it is absolutely wonderful because it's very relaxing, 
it also pushes you in different directions. And there's also sort of a history about it. It's a wonderful way of decorating fabric. Um, you can do all sorts of things. You can wax an area and add dye, but you can also wax an area and you can discharge dye. And where it's protected, i.e. under the wax, it sort of lends itself. You can do all sorts of things, which you couldn't do if you were silk painting, and you couldn't actually do it if you were just doing watercolour. Um, the wonderful thing also about batik is that it's on fabric, and when you dye it, dye the fabric, the dyes go into the fabric. And quite often people say, gosh, your colours are lovely. You know, how do you get that wonderful richness of tone and things? And I say, well, in a watercolour and other paintings, it's on the surface. But here with the batik, it's on, it goes right into the fibres. And also you can hold it up to the light and you can have light behind it and it really comes to life in that way.